Welcome to Adapting Class. 10 questions, high yield, likely to show up on your end list on maternity nursing. I've taken the concept you have to know before you decide to take the end class. Stick around. Let me make this easy. Take a pen and paper and take those concepts and know them because they will show up on your end list. Endless practice question on maternity. We're going to use critical thinking and answer this question flawlessly. First question, what do you think? Test taking strategy. I'm going to give you keywords. What you need to focus on. Which intervention is the nurse priority? That means she has to do something as a priority. She has four options. One second, go for the buzzword. What is the buzzword in this question. A client at 32 weeks presents with what? Contraction and back pain. And then I'm asking you to find the nurse priority action. What do you think the nurse should do? Start IV oxytocin or administer prescribe the colitic or prepare for what? C-suction, encourage frequent ambulation. So answer the question, go back to the buzzword. What is the buzzword? We have the 32 weeks old. What is she doing? Contraction and back pain. Something should be ringing in your ear right now. If you don't connect to that, you're going to get it wrong. This patient is having contraction and the back pain. She's 32 weeks, classify them. Put air in the situation. What is the problem? Let's take in strategy. I'm trying to get you thinking critically to answer this question. She's at 32 weeks and contraction and back pain. This is what we call preterm labor. She has preterm labor. This contraction and back pain, a back problem. Therefore, what do you want to do? Look at the answers. There's two answers that are contradicting each other. Number one, say give the lady pitocin, cause this contraction and help augmenting the cervix and effacement. But then number two said, administer ticulority, slow the mummy down. Three and four does not answer the question. Preparing for C-section does not answer the question because we don't, we don't need to, she's not in trouble. There's nothing we can see that she's deceleration or any, anything or recurring deceleration, right? Encourage frequent ambulation. You don't do anything. Therefore, do you want to slow this lady down or you want her to continue to contract? That's the key concept to answer the question. And as you can see, we have a lady who is in preterm labor. We need to give the lady to the ladies, you know, and, Tibetan or in the Philippine, be able to identify in the question and then be able to answer it. The reason why maternity shows up because of these concepts that you have to take the concept and apply it. Therefore, this patient, we need to give a picolytic and therefore be number two is the right answer. All the questions are going to be like that. And I want you to be able to stop the video Pause it, answer it, and then see the way I'm going to answer the question. Number two, which interpretation is correct? A nurse is assessing a client in active labor, okay? The fetal station is documented as manual too. Which interpretation is correct? This requires a little bit of content, but like I said, it's a basic, if you don't know anything about maternity for the ankles, these are little things you have to know so that when they throw the hard one to you, you'll be able to at least make your way through, be able to answer it. Therefore, you have to know what is a station. And the station is, is respect to the Asia spine, which is zero. If you're negative, it's above it. If it's positive, you're below it. The more positive you are, the more you are about to come out. That's all. That's the concept. Therefore, I've given you the concept. Manius, you are above the issue spine. 
Therefore, which one is your right answer? You see, it's popping out like a candy based on the concept. I went for the buzzword. I said what? Interpretation. And I said what? Fetal station. I understand what fetal station means. And fetal station in this situation is respect to what? The asia spine. If you are negative, you are above the asia spine. If you are positive, you are below. Therefore, she is negative. What do you think? Answer choice, like I say, is popping. Engaging is the beginning. Two centimeters above the asia spine. Look like I'm doing something good. Two centimeters below the asia spine. I'm all the way down. Crowning all the way down. Therefore, two is your right answer. But you can see how we just take the concept and use the concept to use it. Answer the question. A negative station is above the asia spine. Engagement okay at the zero station. Same thing, be able, in case they give you images or they describe it, able to know physiological changes in pregnancy. This is something you have to know. It's not esoteric. A pregnant client reports new skin changes, new skin changes, which finding is most concerning. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? What do you think this one is? What do you think this one is? As you can see, common sense should tell you, look, there's one that look ugly, and there's one that look like normal skin changes, right? You can't tell me you're going to pick normal one because you've seen it multiple times. You cannot tell me you're going to pick something this in your face and leave this alone. You can't tell me you're seeing these lines in somebody's abdomen and pick that one and then leave this alone. This is ugly. This look like a mole, and he has jaggy edges. The skin changes are different. There's variation in the skin. This is a bad mole. I'm going to pick this one. And like I said, concept, there's sticking strategy, and this practice question, maternity, telling you things that you need to know for your health promotion to answer this question. Lydia Niagara is that one. Colosma, right? It's in your face. And the abdominal stride is that one. This is bad. Number five, a client with severe pre encounter is receiving continuous infusion for magnesium sulfate. Why? Because we want to prevent you from having enclampsia, having seizures. But then what is the problem? Which finding require immediate intervention? Stop the video, answer it on your own, and see the way I'm approaching it. You see, I'm going for the concept and ask yourself, magnesium, what is its function? It slows things down. Therefore, everything is going to go down. I see reflexes going down. I see respiratory rate going down. I see urine output is not going down. 550 ml every hour, that's a lot of urine. Blood pressure, 150, over 90. It's not that bad. It's normal. Therefore, somebody who is going down is one and two. Your reflexes or your respiratory, which one is a priority? The question say immediate intervention. I'm going for your respiratory rate. That's more serious than um, your reflexes going down. Number two is your right answer. Which finding require immediate follow-up? And it's review the results of a client contraction test. Thus, you have to know. Contraction stress test and a non-contraction stress test. This shows up every time. Unless in school or endless. It's confusing, but it's not. You have to understand. Contraction test, you want to know if the baby can tolerate labor. And when mommy contract, would the baby heart rate decelerate? That's all. Therefore, we're looking for immediate intervention. If the baby heart rate decelerates during contraction, after we stimulate the mother, that's contraction, that's a bad problem. A negative test means no contraction. A negative test means baby is not decelerating. A positive test means we get a positive sign. Baby decelerate during contraction of the mother. Suspicious results is whatever it is. There is nothing about the results that is suspicious. It's either positive 
or negative, or reactive or non-reactive, right? Unsatisfactory is what? Results is what? It's nothing. It's not telling you anything. The right answer, we have a positive resource. A positive resource means mommy decelerates. A positive resource means baby heart rate decelerate, decelerate during contraction of the mother. That's a bad thing. So that's the answer choice here. So a positive contraction says is what? Late deceleration with contraction. Number seven, a client undergo non-stress test. Now, non-stress test. There's no, there's no stimulation of the mommy. We're just seeing how the baby is doing, the well-being of the baby. And therefore, which results require further evaluation? If we're looking for deceleration for contraction stress test, the opposite is what? Non-stress test means what? There is no deceleration. If you don't go down, you should be going up. I'm using analogy so that you can figure out if it confuses you. Now, I want to go up. That means acceleration. How far do you go? How many times do you should go up? Is the key for non-stress test. At least you're supposed to go up twice, acceleration. It should last for at least 15 seconds. And within 20 minutes, you should have two acceleration. And how high should it go up? At least 15. This is the concept. Play that portion again. Write it down so that when you see a non-stress test, you know what to do. You're looking for at least two acceleration within 20 minutes. It should be 15 seconds duration. And then the um, heart rate should go up minimum 15. Therefore, what do you think? One acceleration in 40 minutes, two acceleration in two, 20 minutes, baseline 140 with the moderate variability. Moderate variability means you're going up, up to like 25. So it's good. Acceleration lasting five, 15 seconds and 15 bit per minute above the baseline. You can tell based on the criteria I've given you, you need to select this. This is concept. Write it down. Go and learn them and master them and come back, watch this video, and you see you answer all of them right. Which are considered probable sign. It means what? Probable sign. That means something that we can examine you and we can figure you out. Right? A probable sign. A positive sign. We're doing a test using some something to look inside the what the uterus to be able to see if there's a baby there, like getting ultrasound, right? We if can see the baby there, it's a positive. If the doctor can do a test and can say, hey, there may be something there, yeah, that's probable. If mommy is complaining about it, that is what? Presumptive. You see fetal movement felt by the client right away. Mommy is talking. Therefore, that is what? Presumptive. A positive test. We did the test. That moving probably something is there. It's a probable. Palatment, right, baby? Up and down, but during examination, right? Chadwick's and ego sign. These are examination in the vagina that the doctor can determine. You know it. I know you know it. These are little things. If you don't know, this video is designed to give you the basic, but concept. Anklus is not supposed to be that big. This little concept, if you had it together, whenever they ask you a question, you'll be able to answer it. Key concept to be able to know what is the difference between positive, negative, and a presumptive test. Probable sign, objective. That means observed by the examiner. Fiddle movement is felt by the mother. Therefore, you know which are the right answer. It's a select, select or apply. You don't have to pick everything. Da, 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 and da. Except number four. Number four is not one of them. And it's explained what? Erythroblastosis fetalis to a client. This is a question you may see. Know it. Look for it. Go read about it. But this video gives you everything. Which maternal condition places the fetus at the greatest risk? 
which maternal condition places the fetus what at the greatest risk? And next, explain erythroblastosis to a client. Which maternal condition places the fetus at the greatest risk? What do you think? Is it ABO incompatibility, RH in incompatibility, gestational diabetes, or preterm labor? The concept, you may see it in the ankles, and you will figure out that sometimes they will trap you on it. But it is what it is, erythroblastosis fetalis. That means blood cells are breaking down and the baby is dying. How does that happen? Is it because of ABO problem, RH problem, gestational diabetes, and preterm labor? You know it, but I use different word. This is what the anglers will use to trap you. Erythroblastosis fetalis is RH incompatibility. Mother is RH negative giving birth to RH positive, and this is what we're having. Baby is dying. Watch for that. Watch for this concept. Don't let them trap you. Adapt and let catch your back, and this is your right answer. Number two, don't forget about it. Every time you see it, go back to RH negativity. And then she respond that quickening usually okay when. Watch for ages, time, mommy can feel first trimester, second trimester, what they need to know, which situation, which time do you feel quickening? What do you think? How would the mommy know this? What time? They may say, which of this you should intervene? Mommy says she's feeling the baby when the baby is eight weeks. Do you think it's appropriate? 10, 12 to 14 weeks, 16 to 20 weeks, 28 to 30 weeks. Common sense to tell you, test taking strategy to tell you, 28 to 30 weeks, you should have fed the baby a long time. 16 weeks is the minimum time you should feed the baby. Therefore, 16 to 20 weeks. These are little things I want you to get it before you go and take the anchors. If you don't learn these little things, please go back, watch maternity, master it. If you need more help, I have a bunch of videos on adapt and class that you can watch for free on maternity nursing bunch of case studies to let you master it. Please know maternity and don't go take the anchors if you don't have this down. Maternity and peace. Don't forget it. Take care of yourself. Have a good day.